tuning in tonight to this Wednesday night service. Uh, we just also want to take the opportunity to invite you to come join us at the highest praise. And we always want to, you know, welcome people to come to the church. But we want people to know we believe in the Bible. We believe the Word of God is the only hope we've got to overcome what we're facing and going through. Amen. Tonight, it's, it's, it's a little different. I, I kind of struggled. And that's so funny when I say struggle. I kind of struggle with how to entitle this scripture that Paul was talking about. So the name of this is struggling with sin. Anybody struggle with sin? I hope everybody in this room says we struggle. Because let me tell you who wrote a lot of the New Testament. He struggled. Now what I'm going to do is something a little bit different tonight. Because I, I feel like this. That I want people to get the, the 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 inside of what this is saying. So I'm going to go to several different translations. So uh, I'm first of all going to go in Romans chapter 7 in the King James Version. Chapter 7 verses 14 through 25. Now they don't have the other one. But I want to read another translation to you as well. So I can break it down for you to understand this. Um, hopefully um, be able to understand it more. In Romans chapter 7, verse 14, it says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. Now, I want you to notice, now, Paul is addressing this at this time. He says, For we know that the law is spiritual. What law is that? The word. Okay? Paul says, I'm carnal. Sold under sin. For that which I do... I allow not. And most people, when they read this, they, they don't go into it to really understand. That's why I think it's so important for us to understand it tonight. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. That's a tongue twister. <coughs> it is no more <coughs> I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Excuse me. For I delight, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. That'll wake you up. <clears throat> For I delight <clears throat> in the law of God after the inward man. Well, Satan don't want me to get this out, does he? I might need a five-gallon bucket. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? In verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Now, do you understand that? That's kind of that's kind of messes you up a little bit, don't it? Right? See, I got somebody else back there coughing. <clears throat> now, what I want to do is I want you to hear me. I'm, I'm going to go to the NLT, the New Living Translation, because I want to share this in a more of a. And I, I looked through tr truckloads of of different translations to find one that really stayed to the purpose but explained itself 
more to us. Now listen to this. So I, this is actually broke down into talking literally where you can understand it. So the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. Now this power makes me a slave to that sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Now in the translation of verse 25, he says, Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. I know what you're thinking. Good gracious, I do reckon. Well, there's no hope. The reason why I broke that down so many different ways is to... Satan is all about deception. Uh, I was just talking a while ago about the Old Testament... If you read the Old Testament laws, God didn't play. You messed up, it was over. When God, God struck people dead right often. Crowds of them, armies of them. But see, if you read the old law and stick to what the old law says only, you're going to be terrified and you're probably going to live a really defeated life because you're going to think you're not, you, you can't overcome what you're going through. See, if we all were to be honest with, with each other, we struggle with sin. Now, struggle doesn't mean, struggle means you're fighting against it. Paul, did God use Paul? Good gracious. He used Paul before Paul was Paul. He used him even as an enemy of the Christians. But see, Paul can teach us probably something better than anyone else can. If there's anybody that understands the struggle and has the right to talk to you about it, it's Paul. Now see, Paul in Romans 7, 14 that we just read through 25, Paul, you know, I want you to think about this. If somebody is that high up in their Christian walk, is Paul? I mean, come on. Paul, Paul was just a, I mean, you're talking about someone that really went forward, but he was honest. He was honest and he struggled. He, he said, man, every time I want to do something good, I don't. He says, and I know what to do. I love God, but I do what I, do what I don't want to do. I know I shouldn't do it, but I do it. Does it sound familiar? I think they need to write a whole lot more on that section right there because... <laughs> Because how many ever say, well, I know I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Well, welcome to Paul's world. Because <laughs> Paul taught us that he said, I, 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 I'm not trying to do wrong. David, in the Old Testament, he knew it was wrong to do what he did. But guess what? He did it anyway. So let me ask you a question. Now, Paul's going to teach us about a battle in this scripture. The battle was with the flesh and the spirit. 
Paul said what was in him, the spirit, he knew right. But there was something war, warring against him, right? And what was that? The flesh. Okay, right? The flesh is warring against you. What does that mean? That means sin. Okay? So Paul said, it's no more I that do it, but what's inside of me that does it. What's inside of you? Sin. Sin nature. He even used in his translation, he said, I'm human. That doesn't give you an excuse to sin, but that tells you why. See, most people don't think they're saved. A lot of people have told me this. I don't, in fact, I talked to a, a lady yesterday. She says, I wonder if I'm going to go to heaven because I'm not perfect. She says, I read the Bible, and buddy, it's telling me I'm going to go to hell for what all this stuff that's going on in the Bible. She says, I, I try. I try, but it just seems like me, I keep falling. Who's that sound like? I, you know, Satan's, one of Satan's biggest deceptions is this. He thinks if you're not perfect, you're going to go to hell. That's what Satan, uh-oh, boy, you messed up. I think really one of the biggest things in Romans where Paul was addressing, he was letting you know, hey, look, let me tell you something. You know, he, he addressed the mind. Do you know he addressed the mind several times because he said in the scripture about the mind? The mind. He was talking about that attack. Listen, you've never done anything that it didn't come through your mind first. People look at different... Um, you rem uh, if people were raised in a monastery... Okay, and that's all they ever knew. They still messed up. I'm serious. See, let me tell you something. Closing yourself off from the world is not going to keep Satan from attacking your mind. See, and, and, and that's important. See, Paul, no matter how hard Paul tried, he just couldn't get it right. Or could he? He got one thing right. That he can't do it. He said, thank God for Jesus Christ. I, I think I want to relay this to somebody. Several people I've been talking to. That, that you might even be in listening tonight. Listen. Give yourself a break. Jesus come done the hard part. Okay. He's done been beaten, crucified, and, and just, you name it. It's already been done to him. So you've got the easy part. Well, I, I, I'm trying. Okay, well, it's, it's still, I don't care how hard you try. If you could obtain it, Jesus wouldn't have came. You've got to realize something, and, and this is so important, is listen. If Jesus done everything he did, and you believe that he did, uh, what is God asking you to do to win over this struggle for sin? For God to love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. Okay. All right. God is asking you to believe. Okay. Why is that such a hard thing for us to understand when we're talking about believe? Because it's easy to believe when things is going good. It's easy to believe when we're not in the sin. It's easy to believe when things is looking great. But he said, I'm asking you to believe even when it looks like things couldn't get no worse. Some people think that means your circumstance. That means sin. Jesus came to set us free from sin. Quit blaming Satan. He's just doing what he's called to do. He is going to try his best to get you off of your belief. Listen, you're not going to be perfect. Trust the one that is perfect and believe even though you mess up. Well, you're supposed to learn not to mess up. Yes, we do want to grow. But there's not one person that would be honest that you still don't struggle with. If you get over one hurdle, Satan will throw another one at you. You get over one temptation, Satan will throw another one at you. If you get over one and you think you got this mountain cleared, there's one bigger in the front of you. But the bottom line of it is, is listen, you're going to always struggle. 
Paul struggled. Did God relieve him of his struggling? No, because he even said, look, no, it's, 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 I'm good with you keeping that thorn. He said, look, he said, no, because see, I, I'm going to work through your thorn. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to come, I'm going to show you the power of me through your thorn. Now listen, everybody wants to try to determine what Paul's thorn was. They want saw a broke foot, broke leg, broke head. They, they all trying to go, listen, this Bible tells us that thorn in his flesh was Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Now listen, Satan is the father of sin. So what was Paul's thorn? His mind. Why do you think Paul wrote Romans 7? He said, he told us what his thorn was. It was the thing. Anybody got one of these? Okay, when you open that thing up, let me go on and tell you, that can be a thorn. Yeah. Amen? Why do you think, you know, we have the problems we have? See, I believe Paul's thorn, Paul addressed so much in Romans that you'd have to be blind as a bat not to see what his problem was. Paul's problem was sin. Oh, no, not Paul the Great. Not all the Pauls we've named after Paul the first, second, third, and fourth, and fifth. Not that Paul. Yeah. Because he said it. He said, my problem is my mind. And he says, I, I'm trying to get this thing straightened out. And I'm really trying hard. But God, every time I want to do something good, I try and do the exact opposite. So Paul teaches us that they win a real battle. And that should make us feel like, okay, well, if Paul can get through it and keep his thorn. You say, well, what do you mean, keep his thorn? How many of us ask God to take something away from us that we know causes a stumbling block? But yet we still got it. Come on. Might as well agree. I know some of you saints, they ain't got no thorns. I totally get it. But you know why you might have that thorn? The same reason Paul. God can work miracles through your thorns. See, every time that I go through these thorns, I'm like, man, I am so sick and tired. Anybody with me? I am so sick and tired of being sick and tired of this, sick and tired of this mess. I do wish for once this thing would just get gone and leave me alone. But guess what? You wake up tomorrow morning, and there he sits. Right? Yeah. yeah. Bam, there's the thorn. And, and, and you wonder, and, and how many of you like me? God, I do wish you would take this thing away. I'm begging and pleading for you to. Paul wanted his taken away. God said, no, it's best that you hang on to it. Because if it keeps you humble, it keeps you coming back to me. See, what happened if God would remove our thorns? Yeah. We would might jump right out there and say, oh, I don't need God no more. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think the churches have these explosions of people showing up, then explosions of them leaving? It's because the thorns got cleaned off the bush. Yeah. And then they go out there, oh, I'm good now, boy. Everything's going good. And let them get a thorn. So you see, my point is, Paul is teaching us that in our human nature, and all of you are human, you're going to have battles. You're going to have struggles. You are going to battle this mind as long as you have it. And listen, Paul teaches us that the war is within the mind. Listen, church, and I know I just talked to you about that, but your mind is the key here. Okay, Remember I told you where Paul said in his scripture, he said, and thank God for Jesus Christ. Now, y'all, I have taught you enough to know who is Jesus. He is not only the only begotten of the Father, but Jesus was here at the beginning of time. In the beginning was the Word. Are you with me? All right, so... Here's where people pay thousands and thousands of dollars for seminars on how to control the mind. Listen, the reason why people are paying all this money and still are messed up in their mind is because they didn't create it. God did. Yeah. And if God creates something, God's got a purpose and a plan for everything he creates, right? God didn't just come up and say, hmm, 
Let me make man. Okay. Let me give him a brain. Let me give him a mind. I don't know what he's going to do with it, but I'll give it to him. That's the society we live in. We call them mindless people. Don't you have a brain between your ears? Right? See, but God said he had a purpose for that mind. And the reason we struggle with sin and Paul struggled. Paul said the key. See, the war is up here. And the reason why the war is up here is because of the world. Because of our human nature and sin. And, and all this stuff that's in us. It's in you. It's in, it's in you. That's why there's a battle going on. But if, if Paul says, and, and the victory, Paul teaches us that the victory only comes through Jesus Christ. So, who is Jesus? He is the... Okay. Uh, but it's so important for you to understand this. He also said the, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then he says, we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So let me ask you a question. We all know that we struggle with sin. We all know just like Paul, we struggle, we try to do right, we go wrong, we do right, we go wrong, we think right, we do wrong, we, we, we think bad, and, and we do bad. We do everything the opposite of what we should do. Just like little children. You tell a child, don't you touch that. And they will look at you. And walk right to it gritting. Uh -huh. Am I right? Yeah. See that's the way we are. See I want you to picture yourselves as God's children. God said don't you do that. Guess what we do. Yeah. We're watching him while we do it. Yeah. You know why I know we're watching him. Because then we said Lord I'm sorry. Come on, church, it's the truth. See, I believe, I believe the whole world needs to realize, get a break. Uh, chill out. Get off your chill pills and realize that Paul let us know that the battle is, is there in every one of us. And that the bottom line of it is, is, is the only way to come out of that battle is every day you struggle, right? But every day you should get you some ammunition. Amen. Now, I'm not saying go out and say, well, the preacher said that we're human. And we're going to sin no matter what we do. So go at it. No, that's not what I'm saying. There's a war going on. And that war is for your mind. Yeah. When you make up your mind that you're going to give in and quit, that's when Satan takes over your mind. Everybody I've ever met that has decided that they were going to turn away, whether, they, whether it's a, 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 a sexual thing or whether it's an identity thing, let me tell you what they finally had to agree. They had to finally make up their mind, in their mind, that they were going to stop. Yeah. Yeah. When you make up your mind, I'm done. Yeah. I'm through. I'm just going to let it have its way. Satan's wins. As long as you are in the flesh, you are going to battle. Good news! As long as you're breathing, you're going to battle. As long as you're breathing, you're going to struggle with the mind. Okay? So the good news of it is Paul teaches us that the victory comes through him. I got the antidote for everything that you go through. Now, listen. It's like healing. When you have surgery, it'd be grace. Great if you were healed right on the spot. Right? It'd be wonderful. How many of us know recovery can be worse than the surgery? <laughs> recovery can be a lot longer than the surgery. Remember your eye? Yeah. Remember the surgeries I went to, a lot of us? The recovery time is the hardest and painfulest time. You know why? The surgery didn't hurt you because you were asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But when you woke up, yeah. that pain medicine wore off. It was on. Amen. Yeah. Now, so what's that got to do with the time of day in Texas? All right, let me explain. See, the struggle is always going to be in you. Yeah. But your recovery time depends on how you listen to the physician. Yeah. Yeah. The physician is Jesus. 
And he's giving you the medicine that you need right here. At recovery time depends on how you listen to the physician. If the doctor says, Greg, now you just had your cut throat cut open. In fact, they, they picked on me the other day. I don't know who I was in the surgery with. Oh, I, I was back there with, with Sarah and them. Let me tell you what the lady was. She says, yeah, I remember you. You're the one that had that throat surgery. And you, I heard you went back and preached Wednesday night. I said, yeah. Didn't listen to nothing I said, did you? I said, no. <laughs> but the thing about it was, if you don't listen to the physician, you might cause yourself more problems. Okay. Now, here's the thing I'm trying to make. See, when it comes to recovery, okay, you got sin in you, which is a disease. It infects you. The sin is a disease to your flesh. So that medicine that God gives you is called the Holy Spirit. Now, you take your Holy Spirit, now you got something to fight off that disease. Y'all staying with me, have I lost you medically? Because if, if I've lost you medically, you're in a world of trouble. I'm going to go and tell you. But that Holy Spirit that God says, I'm leaving a comforter here that will lead you and guide you in all truth. How does it lead you and guide you? It's because, see, the medicine that you give yourself each day will determine your recovery. The battles and the sins in your life that's causing you to struggle, the only way you're going to overcome and, and, and receive a healing is, is depends on how much medicine you're willing to put into that problem. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. The, see, the more medicine you get, the quicker you'll heal. God can't lie. So if you've got somebody, if you're struggling with sin, in fact, you failed 12 times today already. I don't care how bad your sin is. The reason why is because, see, your infection is stronger than your healing. Your infection is overcoming you because you're not listening to the great physician on what to do. You pray every day. You pray a lot every day. You go into the word more. You got something that's beating you down. You go get you some medicine. If how many of you, whenever you, you got, get hurting real bad, you go get you some medicine, right? So that you'll stop hurting. Listen, whenever you're struggling with sin and it's infecting your mind, guess what you got to do? You got to shut off them nuts on, on whatever you're listening to and you got to pick up some word. You got to go into the word. And you got to do it. That armed and dangerous books that I give everybody. That's the reason why is to give you some healing. God's word is healing. But see, the problem of it is, the reason why we keep struggling is because, listen, we spend more time in our infection and our disease of sin than we do for the cure. If I told you right now there was a cure for whatever you're going through medically and, and, and say, look, they come out with a new cure, it's on the news. There's a new cure for Whatever you got, just say cancer. If they said, we've got a new cure, this pill right here will cure cancer. What will everybody do? Boy, you're talking about a flash flood running. Amen? Yeah. Because we know there's a cure. Yeah. The biggest sickness we got is sin. Yeah. And God's already given us the cure. And the name, his name is Jesus. And he not only gave us the cure, he showed us, he wrote it down and told us how to use it. But we're all walking around still infected because we're not willing to do what the physician required us to do to receive our healing. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of struggling. When, I, when, I, when the Lord showed me this scripture to, today, I sat down and I probably read it over and over. And I went through everything. I even went into the commentaries. I tried to find just, just exactly what it was saying. And, and then the Lord showed me, believe it or not, you know when the Lord actually showed me? The, the great physician here, right here, up here. Because I can show you something. All I got is the scripture. That's it. I had to wait till I got here. I was like, Lord, any time now will really work. <laughs> I'm live here, but we don't want this thing to go down bad. Yeah. But he, 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 made, he showed me something. He said, the reason you're walking around sick it's because you're not listening to the physician. Listen, you know what happens if you go home, the doctor sends you home. Take these pills, you'll get better. 
But if you don't take them, I'll see you in three days. If you don't take your medicine, you're going to end up in the hospital. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Somebody come on with me. Spiritually, if we just do what God called us, told us to do, we wouldn't keep running to him struggling. If we just, look, you say, well, Pastor, I, I don't quite get it. Listen, you don't have to know the Bible. Just read it. Just open it up and, and read it. And better yet, if you don't know it, go to the, like the armed and dangerous is nothing but scripture. Whenever you get, whenever, just say, all right, let's say anger. Anger is a sickness. Right? It's a disease. So guess what happens when that disease starts to take over your Okay, and it starts to, t to deteriorate that mind, right? Guess what you got to do? Uh-oh, I got a migraine headache. I need to go take me something for my migraine. Go in the scripture, open up and look up anger. Yeah. And, and let, all right, in the name of Jesus, I'm fixing to, to feed myself some healing. What did Jesus do? He showed us the supreme example he said, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Yeah. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, him only shalt thou serve. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Jesus received his physical healing because he claimed what was written. Yeah. And he is what was written. Yeah. And see, whenever we do that, when someone comes up to you and says, look, I am battling depression. I've dealt with that with two or three today already. You know, I said, listen. Depression is a disease. I had somebody to get mad at me on one of, my, one of my things. I said, well, you asked me. They said, depression. Today, I said, they said, I can't help it. I said, but God can. Yeah. The, there, there's clinical depressions. There are medical depressions. There are all kinds of depressions, but it, it doesn't matter. God's not limited God can do a physical healing just like he can a spiritual healing. Yeah. So why not trust him with it? And I told him, I said, you have got an infection in your mind. When you tell people that, they don't like that. So, man, I'm suffering from, uh, let's see, let's th throw one out there. What you been suffering from? Anybody want to holler? Stress. Stress is a disease. Stress, but it starts in where? Okay, so whenever that disease starts to take over, you say, well, how do I know that this disease is taking over? Oh, you'll know, because your stress goes, yeah. it's called meltdown, stress out. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? See, we know, we know when an infection is taking over. How do you know when an infection of anger is taking over? <laughs> hey, everybody can tell you, right? You need to chill. Because, see, see, that's when you realize you need some medicine. Think about it. It's the most simplest thing in the world to do. Sadness. Loneliness. Loneliness is probably one of my devotions that I get more comments on. And fear. Fear is a disease. So guess how you treat the disease? You should know by now. How do you treat the disease? Amen. You treat the disease with the medicine. And the medicine is what? There you go. Y'all have been now certified to go out and heal. The word. The word don't need your help. The word is Jesus. All he needs for you to do is give it to him. Look, if you can, look, them Pain killers are not going to relieve your pain if you don't put it in your mouth. Yeah. Amen. God's word is not going to heal unless you put it in. Right. I should have saved this for Sunday. If I knew God was going to do all this tonight, we'd have regrouped. <laughs> but the bottom line of it is, is go out there and realize, look, whatever it is that gets you. Stop and say, uh-oh, preacher said that's a disease. Boy, I need some medicine right now. Carry your books around with you. Carry stuff around. Stop and say, uh-oh. No. School teachers, y'all need a big one. See, because y'all got all that stuff wrapped around you. And, you know, it's like, 
Y'all, y'all need it plugged into your earphones or something just constantly. But see, when you do it, it's healing. See, God's word heals. I have never gone to God's word in the worst times I'm going through. If I went to it rather than going through the sin, if I, if, even if I fell into sin, I'd come out of it and say, uh-oh, Lord, I didn't take my medicine. Oh, man. And, and, and I got worse. That's okay. It's okay. Your medicine is still good. I'm going to take your medicine for healing. I'm going to take your medicine for restoration. I'm going to take your me- whatever medicine I need so that I can get back on track. What happens when you stop an antibiotic before the time is out? You get right back in the worst shape. But when you start falling, you forget what you do. You jump right back on the medicine, right? Yeah. So you can continue your healing. Listen, church, when you fall, just t- get up and take some more medicine. Just, just, just stop letting anything else bother you and take your medicine. When you, if, you fa- if you fall, just get up and say, uh-oh, I didn't take my medicine, but okay, I'm going to take it now. If you get used to taking your medicine, one day you're going to walk in healing. One day you're going to walk out of what you thought you'd never come through. One day that addiction that had you will be a, a faint memory because you applied the blood of Jesus that heals all. When you do that, then your mind will be a thing that God can use. So, closing. How many of you know that all you got to do is treat your sin just like a disease? And here's the good news. You don't have to go to the pharmacist to get the medicine. You already got it. Don't cost you a dime. Just cost your belief. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that your word. I thank you for Paul tonight. I thank you for Paul's honesty. Lord, and, 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 and enlightening us that we all are human. And, boy, we all go through this battle of struggling and sin. And our mind, Lord, it's, it's the main attack point for, for all the sin and struggles we go through. But, Lord, I thank you that you are the great physician tonight. I thank you, Lord, that your word is power. Your word is authority. Your word is healing. Lord, we we done seen in your scripture, Jesus, where you used what was written to make Satan leave you alone. And, Lord, Satan is behind all sin. And, Lord, we know that we've been given that freely because of you, Jesus. So thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross for our healing, deliverance, and restoration. Lord, I pray more than anything, more than a physical healing tonight. I pray for spiritual healing. I pray that we will feed our minds so much of your word that we will start walking out of these bondages, out of these struggles, and we will start walking in victory. Lord, the more we take of you, the stronger we become. We just pray for all lost and sick and need, for healing of body and soul. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank y'all so much.